Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here. Got Chris and Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. In to today's you. video, we'll be talking about how the sun will change us for better and for worse, and how the planet will change underneath us. Really quickly, the twinkling of an eye. And we'll also talk about how this is related to star alignments and solar flares and electromagnetic activity and we'll also learn how this is going to heal us right to have us living longer lives just like the bible said yeah a lot of good stuff that's going to be included in this video so you guys make sure you stay tuned go ahead and hit that like button make sure you subscribed put it in the watch later list and leave a comment so what we're doing in this video is we're going all the way to key 304 from the keys of enoch this is from the book of knowledge um the keys of enoch and before christian pulls it up there on the screen i want to you know talk about how this book is being suppressed mm, is it highly being suppressed even in our videos there are, it seems to be those that are trying to make this information unavailable and those individuals we would know as the elite you hear people talking about the elite well it is the elite who have this document they have a society that um, is centered around this information um, in this book and, you know, including what we're going to share here. And they want to be exclusive. In other words, they want to be the only ones with this knowledge right. to the point where they're actually hiding the book. Hmm. Not making it available, um, not making it information. You can buy it right. over at Future Sciences, but who knows about it? They're right. not promoting or advertising mm -hmm even hiding it from being shared and eve yeah and when we've tried to share the information from the book they're actively trying to withhold this information just as they're they're trying to withhold other information related to this change that we are experiencing here as a humanity as a race right they, they want us blindsided in other words right but we're going to do our best to prevent all of that by going ahead and spitting it out there and so we're going to jump over to key 304 um, Stacy, if you would, would you go ahead and read the key? We're going to talk about the verses here, but go ahead and read the key just so everybody knows what this chapter or this key is about. Okay. The keys to future luminaries are electromagnetic forces which affect the rhythms of life and the appearance and extinction of species within the Earth's magnetic field. The higher evolution will give a better understanding of how electric forces alter biological rhythms and will allow man in this consciousness time zone to receive whole light beings who will give instructions of the next ordering of evolution in our universe. So what he's talking about is the change that we are experiencing and the prophecies that's supposed to go along with it here. Okay. You got Enoch wrapped up in this, you got Joel wrapped up in this, you got the Messiah, Matthew 24 wrapped up in this, you got the book of Revelation, all touched upon in here. And he's, you know, going to talk about a specific thing that we're reading about here, and that's um, how the luminaries and electromagnetic forces are going to be used to heal people. We're going to learn that it's going to... Um, um, rejuvenate bone growth in people. That's how we're going to get this healing that we read about in Malachi chapter four, and it's, it's going to talk about a lot of stuff here. So let's let's go ahead and get to it. We're going to let you guys uh, read, and we'll just talk about it as we go. Father Willie. Okay. We got Big Drake here. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> Number one. The key speaks of how the Earth's species has a direct light arc, a direct light focus which controls its biological rhythms. Man will soon learn that this life system is not directly dependent upon the solar magnetic field paradigm to regenerate his biological rhythms. So we have this direct light arc. And of course we understand light to be understanding. Mm -hmm. Right. And when we start to look at the celestial clock calendar, um, which is also being suppressed. They don't want us to know about that either. They don't want you to know about it. You start to understand this light arc when you understand that our Earth and us 
will be in a certain position in time and space when these events take place. Hmm. Okay. It's like it's a laser beam that's shining into the spot already and we're going to pass in front of it. Right. Or maybe not so much as a laser beam, but just a bright light in the center. And we have to be just facing in the right direction to get this light to shine up on us. Right. And we're in the season for that. Um, even going back as far as um, 2017 and farther. I mean, we're just coming to a peak right now. Do we know if uh, this light is always there? And, you know, it's just our time to come around, so to say. Or is it that it only appears at certain times? No, it's always there. Mm -hmm. And our planet alignment is set up based on the pyramids and when they were built. Mm -hmm. And it is just so happened that that cycle of time has made it back around, uh, back around to where the pyramids are going to line up again back when this started. So when we look at movies and it's showing from one light hitting one pyramid and then going to the next one and going to the next one and going to the next one. That's all sort of true. Is that what, is that what we're saying? Um, yes, yes, absolutely. It's just on a much higher scale. The old okay. pyramids that are here on the earth, um, that predate the one in Giza are ancient pyramids, meaning they don't work no more. They don't have a, they don't have the proper alignment anymore. That's why a new pyramid had to be built. Mm. It's because Just those were outdated. They were out, well outdated or out of time. They they don't they don't line up anymore. Right. Just the one in Giza will also fall because it or fall whatever it just will become outdated because it's no longer the timepiece of the Earth, and another one will be built somewhere in Altea, America, when it comes up out of the water. Hmm. Very interesting. All right. Well, let's do we okay? Did we talk about these uh, paradigms, right? No. Okay. Well, now, it also says that man will learn that his life system is not directly dependent upon the solar magnetic field paradigm. Now, that to me sounds like he's saying that we are all of a sudden going to realize that the sun is not our god. It's not the center of our universe. Not where all of these, you know, fluxes is coming from. Right. It's not the source. It's not a source of these higher uh, spiritual things that's going on is the, the sun is actually very three-dimensional yes and but we're going to understand that magnetic field paradigms is what regenerate the biological rhythms and i've been studying a lot about biological rhythms but what we're going to learn in this chapter in this book is that these biological rhythms are being affected by magnetic fields so what is meant by the biological rhythms? Oh, I just told you I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you said you Chris, did. Chris, pull it up, yeah. You did study a lot on that. No, ma'am, I did not. I spent probably five minutes. Well, we can search Google. Chris? Biological rhythm is a phrase often used interchangeably with circadian rhythm. These rhythms are a series of bodily functions regulated by your internal clock. They control cycles like sleep and wakefulness, body temperature, hormone secretion, and more. So, bodily functions. They are being affected by magnetic field. Mm, okay. Not only humans, but all species on Earth is, and that's why the animals will change too when we go through these changes. Is that something like when people say something like, uh, you shouldn't cut your hair when the moon or you should cut it out, cut your hair. It stops yeah. your hair from growing and stuff like that. Yeah, of course, the knowledge behind all of that would have been lost over time. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. basically what they're talking about. Timings based on moons and okay. wandering stars. Okay. All right, let's go on. Number two, a new source of light is now reaching our solar system and interpenetrating Earth's magnetic field, altering the biological rhythms. This is forcing the species to leave behind its old time cell of perception on the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. In other words, we're about to make a five-dimensional jump. We're about to stop thinking so third-dimensionally 
food, clothing, and shelter. Mm -hmm. And we'll start to be more fifth dimensionally with those things taken care of for us by the Elohim, of course. We'll start to concentrate on more higher minded things. And this is based on what it's saying here, a new source of light shining. And it's new to us, very new to us, because the last time we would have had this alignment, this planetary alignment, um, would have been during a time of Solomon, hmm. 976 BC. The stars aligned similar to what they're doing now. It wasn't absolutely lined up perfectly. You only get them lined up perfectly within our solar system if you go back to 3908 or something like that during the time of Cain and Abel. Adam and those guys, when Adam was created here on the planet, um, around that time, give or take 66 years, um, because you know, gotta remember, uh, Cain was the first human born here on the planet. Sometime around that time, maybe even the seven years before they got kicked out of Eden, was the perfect alignment that we will see here in the year 2024. Mm -hmm. So, this is a new light to us, but is we saw this light 6,000 years ago. Right. Right about at this time. Number three. This must take place before the species can go into new time cell of consciousness with a unified perception. Yeah. So this is necessary. Um, the, the humanity couldn't make the jump without it. Same way with the flood and then Noah's time. It's, it's a necessary change that humanity has to go through in order for us to, to jump. If it were not for all of these catastrophic events, which is what we're talking about, humanity would keep a cell of people who would otherwise want to do things different. Right. Well, that's never going to be allowed to happen anymore. So what's going to happen here is anything that's distracting us from our Father is going to be extinguished and leaving only... Um, our chance to grow, I guess. Sort of like we did it your way, now we're going to do it my way. Yeah, we had 6,000 years of doing it our way. Mm -hmm. Now it changes back to the way it's supposed to be. Right. Number four. As the arcs of light began to change, a different light force is beginning to work with the electromagnetic forces. This is causing the magnetic fields of the brain cavity to be sufficiently raised to a higher mental frequency, allowing man to receive whole light beings who will give instruction as to the program of the next level of creation. In other words, our brains are going to change. Hmm. Some, some will start to think on the pineal gland, and I'm not an expert on that at all, but from what I understand, during the time of Abraham and, and Noah, the pineal gland was bigger than what it is now. And that could be why people are experiencing headaches because our brains are changing. The pineal gland may be getting bigger, oh, yeah. which is a connection to our spiritual side. Mm -hmm. It's like an antenna for the father's wavelength. Right, or a receiver, right, absolutely. And has it gotten smaller over time, man has gotten further off and away from nature, Holy Spirit, our Father, all things mm -hmm. higher dimensionally. And now here in 2024, we are concentrated on food, clothing, and shelter. And you too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, people are doing, uh, just concentrating on things, not of knowledge, but just frivolous things. You know, yeah. watching videos about cats and uh, puppies and stuff like that and well that all it is you no know, good bad or indifferent It's all going to be taken away and then we will have only our father to to talk to um for a while giving humanity the chance to embrace him as a whole and that's what's different now is all of the world will now have a, a cry we're all going to cry out at once help 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 and then you know we're never going to go back to the old days where we think we don't need his help anymore. We can do it without him. Yeah, I was reading this today in the Third Testament. We was talking about all the things that were done to misrepresent what he originally meant for us and falsify uh, what was, you know, his original intentions. All of that stuff will be done away with. Yeah, absolutely. The age of truth is what we're moving to. The age of truth. 
Right. He was nope. asking about a he was asking about an error earlier. Mm -hmm. And so we're about to change errors from the error of Piscean error, the Piscean error to the Aquarian error. Which and is that's the age of truth. Truth. Yeah. Number five. It has previously been thought that the light forces of the Earth's magnetic field control the rhythms of life of all biological species. And living cells need only the light of our own portion of the electromagnetic spectrum to survive. Go ahead. Read the next one. The key tells us, however, that without new magnetic paradigms working with multiple arcs of color, the color radiation of the sun's light will not be sufficient for the survival of the species. In other words, you can't provide everything we need. Saying that we think now that all we need is sunlight, the amount that we're getting, and we'll be fine, but we need more than just that. Yeah, that's why a lot of people, even to today, are into sun god worship. Worshiping the gods of the sun is because this is what belief, this is why we do this, is because we believe that's all we need. Well, it's enough. Hmm. We're going to learn that it ain't. Right. Maybe we'll learn it when it ain't, when it goes dark. Hmm. We ain't, don't get to see it for a while. We're still out, still alive without it. All right. Number seven. We will therefore begin to work with more of the complete spectrum. The major color factor, however, will be the warm white color coding, which will enable us to integrate with our original form scent from the higher universe to this world. Remember in the book of Revelation, it said we won't even need the sun anymore. Hmm. You remember and said that? Right. And we'll have a need of the sun anymore. Mm -hmm. And we understand that the, the sun is going to be changed. And you understand also that the father's people will be supernaturally removed to safe places. So, yeah, this is this is big. And he said it's warm, white color coating will shine through. And it's also um, it's referring to the new heavens and the new earth, which, you know, I guess after the skies clear up we'll start to see changes in the sky right and the stars so um, we'll see different um stars thus having the brain of an electromagnetic computer we will be forced to adapt to an enlarged electromagnetic spectrum or spin out of the old electromagnetic spiral into consciousness depth if we cannot code into the new colors when we cross our alpha and omega light spectrum. In other words, it's gonna kill each other. Hmm. When, when we go through this change, it's gonna be the solar flare that'll cause the change in humanity. Every species on the planet is going to uh, change in its manner. And if the species is not ready, or if the individual within this species is not ready to adapt to this new consciousness time zone, they are going away. They, mm -hmm. they leave it. They'll spiral out of control and maybe harm some people on their way down. Well, the prophecy, just like in the book of Samuel, um, the Philistines will start to fight each other they're gonna, as they run away, running from, you know, trying to attack the children of the Most High as they flee. You know, after, you know there was an earthquake, I believe, that, that happened first. And then after the earthquake, they all fled. The enemy fled, all killing and fighting each other as they ran away. Mm. And that's the prophecy of the day. And what we're understanding here is that it's going to be because they're not ready to cross this alpha and omega light spectrum, this Aleph and Tav light spectrum, beginning and the end light spectrum. And it could be why our Father has given us symbols of the Aleph and the Tav to let us know that, you know, what time it is. All right. The new electromagnetic frequency is an astrobiological threshold by itself and yet attached to a plurality of new astrobiological thresholds of many suns creates a covenant of the living light, Mishva Esh, which is the integration of the many color thresholds of light. So the electromagnetic frequency is a threshold. So once these frequencies change, then humanity will cross this threshold. Mm, right. And that's what Paul was saying, that it will go down in the twinkling of an eye. Do you know how fast electricity is? 
Is it the speed of light? Yeah, I, it's I the speed of light if nothing's stopping. I think it's a slightly below, but yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's how fast the world is going to change. And then those that are ready to embrace this new light will be happy. Live happily ever after, and those that are not will not. Then notice it's saying covenant of living light mitzvahs. So, and that's what it's boiling down to is the covenant. You know, that's the sign of the, the X across America. The sign of the X is the sign of the covenant. The Tav is the sign of the covenant. Right. The Aleph is the beginning or the, or the sign of the bull. Uh, or, you know, our father, Abba, strong bull kind of, you know, fatherly figure. And then the Tav is a, um, is a X across America. And if you think about it, I'm just thinking about it for the first time. That's the symbol that we use on our channel. Yeah. It's the same, you know, symbols that they're seeing they um being portrayed in eclipses. They left from top. Marked across the country. Hmm. Reminds me of Genesis fifteen and thirteen. But right, let's go on. Ten. Accordingly, we will go beyond this present threshold where we have been kept by the old solar paradigm of power within a common light covenant of only one sun. In other words, they are keeping us suppressed by making us worship the sun. By making humanity focus its light, its life, its, its sight on the sun is similar to when you do so in the third dimension. After you spent so much time looking at this hot rock up there, you ain't gonna see nothing else for a while. Mm -hmm. And so they do this. They keep it flashing in your face every time you turn on YouTube, every time you go to Walmart, every time you do anything, subject yourself to the world. They're going to flash the sun god worship in your face. It's everywhere. Everywhere. And what it does is keeps you down here in bondage, you know, physical and mental bondage because you need food, clothing, and shelter to survive, which our father would otherwise prov would provide for us. If we weren't allowing ourselves to gaze into the S-U-N so much. We've tricked ourselves into thinking that the sun is what's providing us these things. And it's blinding us. Blinding us. But, Burning our eyeballs out. So by, um, you know, worshiping the sun, um, I, how is this um, keeping us in from not crossing over? I'm not understanding it. Because it's blinding you. You can't be what the you can't serve God and Mammon is is you know an example or similar example to that. Because as soon as you start focusing in on money, you have to put away our father. You can't do both at the same time. You can do one one day and one the next day, but you can't do them at the same time. Well, it's the same way with idolatry. Which is sun god worship is idolatry. Once you step into idolatry, you've now cut yourself off from the Father and anything He wants to do for you. That's that's a weapon that Satan is using. That's why it's the second commandment in the Bible, is the avoidance of anything, any likenesses. Don't look at any pictures of anything. Like I was telling the boys this morning, it tricks you. Your eyes, the pupils of your eyes are black, and when you look at a person, you're actually looking into their soul. But you do the same thing when you look at the image of a person. You're tricking your spirit into thinking that you're looking into the soul of a person. But what you're actually doing is just looking into the black ink on that paper. And you step into a spiritual kind of state, like a hypnosis kind of state, which you would normally be in if you was gazing into somebody's eyes. But now you're just doing so second dimensionally, basically casting yourself into the second dimension and cutting off all fifth dimensional communications. You, you taking yourself out of the spirit. So if it wasn't up for the sun, it could actually be anything, you know, the moon, the stars or has, anything else. Well, now you're speaking three dimensionally. You you the sun, it has to be bright. It has to be bright enough to buffer out the other emanations coming from the other stars. They are actually a physical light arc. I know we're speaking, you know, fifth dimensional and third dimensional, jumping back and forth. But these planets like Kemal and Kizil, we hear about them in the book of Job. These Kemal and Kizil <laughs> are the sources of a lot of these emanations, this light that is shining on us. And the reason why 
we go through these changes, these dramatic changes from one half of the year where everybody's merry and wanting to, you know, um, do Christmas parties to the other half of the year where everybody's uh, want to blow stuff up in the, in the, in, in the, in the um, celebrations of war. It's because of Kimmel and the emanations that it's sending are blocked out half of the year. You go into the Feast of Tabernacles with Kimmel rising where you get to see it for six months and you see Kimmel from Tabernacles every night. All you got to do is go out there on a, a clear night and look and you will see probably the main constellation up there. It's the source, it's the center of our uh, universe. You see the center of our universe there when you look at Kimmel. And, but you can only see it from October to April. Here, you, you got a few nights to see it. You know, by the time you get to Unleavened, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it's gone for the rest of the year. And you're not going to see it. Well, the reason why you don't see it is because the sun is up there. It's there anyway. But the sun is up there. And what's happening is the sun's light is buffering out this other light. So where you in the wintertime, you can expect a lot of dreams and all of this to go on. You go through changes. You, you know, Even the world goes through changes where it affects our biorhythms. And that's why they have pagan celebrations to let everybody know, hey, we, we're getting ready for the other half of the year or we're getting ready for this season or that season. Our feast days are doing the same thing. But in order to eliminate our father out of the big picture, they had to create their own feast days. And the mistaken and big part of that was they centered them around false gods and got us worshiping false gods. Right. Number 11. Our sun, by virtue of being a variable star, will be seen as having great limitations for future evolutions. This will be observable by a visible exchange of the solar polarity fields and by the magnetic mappings of inner solar magnetic lines rotating faster than the surface of the sun. What that means, Dave? What? <laughs> what you just read? <laughs> Let me put my glasses up. Our sun, by virtue of being a variable star, means it's changing, will be seen as having a great limitations for future evolution. In other words, it ain't going to be no use to us. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> they like, okay. That's, another big, that, that's what Paul was saying. We ain't going to have no need for the sun. No, yeah. what John was saying. We just went from the verse before that said that we were totally dependent. dependent on the sun and now it's going to say now the sun is going to be insufficient. You're going to find out. Right. Wow, and put all your faith in it. All the food items, well, half of the food items in the kitchen got the picture of the sun on it reminding us that this is a country of sun god worship and our food that we were, you know, the agriculture is all dependent on sun god worship and we're going to find out that, hey, the sun uh, wasn't that big a deal. We're going to find out the hard way. This will be observable, meaning you're going to see it. Right. Ain't no spiritual stuff. Um, it says an exchange of the solar polarity fields. Chris, you want to talk about what that could possibly mean? They're going to change like the polarity? A pole shift of the sun? Oh, yeah. He went real basic on his pole shift. Mapping of inner solar magnetic lines rotating faster than the surface of the sun. So the magnetic fields would be spinning faster than the surface of the sun because the score, core of the sun spinning faster. That could be what happens to the atmosphere. It's supposed to be stripped away at least for a little while. <sighs> anyway. Are you saying that this is something that we will visibly be able to see? Magnetic mapping of the inner solar magnetic lines rotating faster than the sun. It sounds like you're going to feel it too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. These changes will also affect the rotation of Saturn. This will be seen as a periodic effect which will be noticed in the activity of Saturn's rings. It will illustrate new changes that will take place throughout the entirety of the solar system. So we keep our eye on the Sabbath day star, the Sabbath day planet. Mm -hmm. And that planet is the Sabbath. That's what Saturn comes from. That's why it's named Saturn after Saturday, which All is, right. you know, he used to call it the Sabbath day. But 
Um, it's more on a seven year cycle. So it's telling us of the sabbatical years. But it's saying it's going to change. The rings are going to change. Right. Hmm. These changes are the result of new biological light controls being directly introduced by the new administrative order in conjunction with the Council of Nine. These changes are necessary to prepare our human evolution to overlap with whole light beings of advanced creation in the evolution of new astro mutations. See, a lot of people talk about Anunnakians. And this is pretty much what they're talking about, except they are on a third dimensional level. While these beings here, these are whole light beings. They're made of light. Mm -hmm. right? And so they're basically talking about angels. Right. You know, this brotherhood, these, is talking about this myriad of angels that our father is supposed to bring along with him. Um, the Messiah is supposed to bring along with him in these end times to help. Well, what they're helping with is, you know, all of these activities that's going on in the world. I mean, how are we going to dodge an electromagnetic storm you know, without yeah. these beings, these whole light, being, whole light beings escorting us the same way they did back there during the time of Abraham and Lot? That's who, that's who Abraham was talking to was these whole light beings. That's how he knew they was an angel immediately by looking at them. He's like, they didn't have to announce themselves. Right. They just announced, do not be afraid. And you already know, hey, <laughs> yeah, this, this, yeah. Ain't, this ain't no human. Yeah, yeah, because you would wonder why they were always like fall on their face or they would hide their face or they would, you know, they would definitely be scared. And so, yeah, I think I would be scared of a being of light. Yeah. Just appear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you don't see them. They're here anyway. Mm -hmm. And humanity as a whole would be too frightful to actually see them and scare us, sense us, scare us, scare our brains out. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's why he protects us from it. And that's one of the reasons why we were provided a buffer of these light emanations. Otherwise, humans would have evolved too quickly. And, you know, then you would have had this, you'd have had a, you'd have had a problem. You'd have been, you'd have been involved, evolving too. I mean, they give you a pill for that now. <laughs> it wouldn't have went through sufficient trials. Right, that too, right? And then, you know, you would still have those who would be mocking and those who would be laughing. Right. So are these beings just for those who had, who have made that transition where they cross over from the thresholds or are they just for everybody who survived, um, the events they are for everybody but you got to understand what the covenant and the torah and you know the bible does for us it prepares us to be able to accept and deal with these people right you could imagine any military or any kind of force that was showing up in your neighborhood to help you if you didn't have the right attitude toward them mm -hmm. you probably gonna make them mad mm -hmm. you know but so you read your bible so you already know how to act no matter who shows up you know, you know what to do, right. you know, and then so that's what's going to happen. All of humanity will go through this change. Every human is going to go through and every species is going to go through this change. But who's ready for the change? Yeah, who's prepared? So are these uh, beings what we would call today, quote, aliens? They're calling them aliens every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, but. They're, they don't have a three-dimensional aspect. They're only light beings. Mm -hmm. Even these being these ships that they're seeing in the sky. That's why they're able to move so quickly and do so many dynamics that, you know, prove that they're not physical. They're breaking the laws of physics. Like it's, the flying tic-tac? Yeah, the flying tic-tac is only... Well, I don't know about the flying tic-tac. But you have the tri the pyramids that, that form in the sky. Right. Where they're, they're four beings of light four light structures in the sky maybe it's three and it turns into four what it is is two interlaced pyramids and they're rotating they call it the Merkaba and they're rotating in a way that you can only see so many lights of it at one time right. and then when they spin or shift you were like wow that's incredible but what it is is you can't see the other side of the Merkaba until it appears and so it seems supernatural the purpose of these light beings, these Merkabas, is to blank the minds of those that are not ready to go over. In other words, some of these changes would otherwise drive them crazy and they wouldn't and be making up stuff. Now, they, they would not be able to um, 
um, maybe the father, I'm gonna get, father, get a credit to the father for giving me this information, but they wouldn't be able to make the transition. Sort of like in the men in black when they zap you with that thing and they told them that they wasn't ready for it. Yeah, that's um, the Merkel book because <laughs> same, same good example because that's, if you look at that movie, everything that they zapped them, if they didn't get zapped, they would otherwise not been able to handle the information that they've just received. Well, that's what these Merkabas are doing. They're basically blanking the minds of those that are not ready just to give them a little more time to survive as humans before they go straight crazy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 14. New astral mutations will take place where new magnetic lines bring about the balances in the energy coupling from a proton-electron-proton -proton grid to an electron-proton-electron -proton grid. Here the bioenergy field of the body inherits a new electron and positron pair and the blood circulatory system inherits new magnetic lines of force. Pose, yeah. That was a lot. <laughs> There's a pose shift there. Proton, electron, proton to electron, proton, electron grid. In other words, everything going to flip. Right, because the electrons and protons have opposite charges. So you're going to pole shift. And people are experiencing pole shifts now. Personal pole shifts. The problem with it now in the 20th century is we give you a pill for it. We say that you're crazy. You start seeing these light beams and you start getting these emanations that nobody can explain. The next thing you know, you're going to be down on the fourth floor of the hospital. But from what we're seeing, it's just a lot of it is happening um, physically, uh, you know, like you mentioned with the headaches and um, different things like that, uh, people it, feeling certain ways. Um, so It is a physical change. Right. Now, but I, you got to understand our Father is also sending these light beings out for the first fruits. Mm -hmm. to prepare them even seven years earlier all the way back to 2017 preparing them for this day and so yeah you have people that's going through the changes but those who are not prepared they're gonna they still got more time to get ready for not, well they got time to get ready for the change too so mm -hmm. okay. the ionized field around the blood cell loses its proton electron proton relationship to a new electron proton electron field as the life form is moved into the next phase of the electromagnetic spectrum. The former proton orientation is dropped and a new recombination process results. See, this is how they lived for so many hundreds of years is because of this change in humanity. People often wonder what happened after the flood. Mm -hmm. Noah's flood. Well, Humanity probably would have went through something like this to where the people born, you know, right around that time, they lived for a long time because of this shift in their cells. Mm -hmm. We learn in, we learn in this book that our cells are in a phase where they've been bombarded, being bombarded by destructive forces now. In other words, our cells have a hard time rejuvenating themselves, but when we go through this shift, they're going to actually rejuvenate themselves faster and your wounds will heal faster. And we're going to get into verses that even talk about bone growth. How are you going to perish under that? Your body is fixing itself faster than you can break it. Hmm. They had a movie for that. <laughs> yeah. What, what was that movie? Uh, yeah, they got a few movies for that. The Bionic Man would have been kind of what we're talking about. Humans yeah. are about to become the Bionic Man. I think of um, X-Men with Wolverine. Mm -hmm. How... You know, time he's, you know, he get a limb cut off and not that it grows back, but it's not affecting him or it doesn't hurt or stuff like that. So, yeah. 16. In other words, molecular density levels work with certain frequencies of light radiation. And when the light source is changed in this manner, the molecular density level is changed to reveal the next electron orbital level of the universal mind. In other words, we're about to jump. It's a fifth dimensional jump. It's a higher universal jump. And it's like understanding and realizing that there are other wandering stars out there besides the ruler. The ruling planet out there for 
in the Bible years, they thought that it was the only one. And then all of a sudden, you realize that there is Uranus out there. And it is a multiple, you know, that works on a celestial clock. And so then you start to understand a bigger, broader picture of things. And that's what's about to happen to us on a whole. And we don't need these books to do it. It's going to come from within. All of these changes, like you said, are on a molecular level. These changes are on a molecular level. So you mean ain't nothing you can do about it. Mm. Okay. Most of the world is not even going to know what happened to them. Most of the people are not going to care, though. Because the most of the people in the world are what the scripture refers to as innocent. And they're ready to make the change anyway. And it's just going to be like a light coming on for them. It's as other people who are, you know, have issues that's going to struggle the most. 17. In other words, man will be able to participate in higher evolutionary worlds because his hemoglobin change will shift from his phylogenic tree to a new system of balance whereby a singular group and vacuum ultraviolet waves will combine to allow for a quantum relocation. The combination of these three types of waves will allow the organic form of life to pass through the old molecular density into a new molecular density as a holistic system. Holistic. He's speaking holy. You heard that term before. Holistic medicine. Right. Well, he's speaking to you on subatomic level, string theory. You want to know how holistic medicine works? Go to the opposite end of the spectrum and start studying string theory. Quirks. Subatomic particles. That's how our change is going to take place. Within our blood, it's saying here, there's going to be a change within the subatomic particle. It's within our, within the, the, the molecules of our blood, changing them to a holistic system. And what is it? What is it saying? Is there, is it... Is the saying that a certain thing is going to change it, or is just going to be these light beings are going to change it, or I mean, how is it just going? Everything's just going to shift in your body. Um, the light beings are here to give instruction. Right. They're they're only here because the change is taking place. If it, if it wasn't for them, you'd have to deal with it on your own. Mm -hmm. It's the change in the polarity of the solar system. The, the, the whole solar system polarity is changing like the whole system is flip-flopping from positive to negative and that's going to affect every molecule in the universe this is so I mean it just brings me so back to my um, Star Trek days of just seeing how when they would go from dimension to dimension um, a lot of this stuff was being brought to life uh, about how different changes, you know, they would wake up one, go through one dimension and they would be a certain way, and then they go to another dimension and they would be a different ways. And it's, you remember the planet they alive, they they arrived on and everybody was dead and they didn't know it? Oh, it seemed like I do remember yeah. that, but I can't recall exactly that, that's that. That's actually real too. But anyway, let's go on. <laughs> Number 18. The change of the new phylo genetic tree will allow for a tremendous restructuring of the blood circulatory system. As part of this overall change, the alpha and delta chains will allow for a unique coupling whereby the beta chain will be eliminated through quantumized changes. Yeah, so that's basically what this book it's going to keep getting deeper and deeper, but I at least want to get to one particular verse that I highlighted when I read the book. Um, and I want to talk about how it's saying that our bones are going to be rejuvenated. Well, Stacy, this is pretty much why I brought you in this class because this is some high level stuff. You know, we kind of try to keep it down to earth here. What, with me? Yeah. Keep it down to earth. Yeah, I mean, do you understand? Keep it basic and simple. Do you understand restructuring of the blood circulatory system? I'm understanding it more that, you know, when you talk about it and bring it out more. Uh, yeah. And well, as I'm reading it, it's making more sense. And it is helpful to have, you know, talking about these movies and TV shows, but... The way they try to show it. Yeah. But it looks like they're talking about DNA here, where it says part of the overall change, the alpha and delta chains, will allow unique coupling. Mm -hmm. So it's a DNA change. Wow. 
maybe like unlocking a part of our DNA that we aren't using now? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, a part that allowed us to be rejuvenated, allowed our blood to heal us, was somehow disconnected in a pole shift, and now it's about to shift back. I guess that's why the father said the life is in the blood. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Presently, the two alpha and the two delta chain bind with oxygen better than the two alpha and the two beta. Therefore, in the quantum change of the human evolution, the beta chain will be eliminated and the delta will become the penultimate. So, yeah, DNA change. In the twinkling of an eye now, just like that, click from going left to going right. Okay, so let's go back to this here. So if this is going to happen for everybody, right? Right. What's the purpose of me living a set-apart life if everybody's going to go through this chain and I am... Um, if everybody's going to be on the same level, yet yeah, I'm living a set-apart life, not participating in unrighteousness, but everybody's going to be um, the same. What you going to do the next day? What do you mean? If you think about a lady named Stephanie, mm -hmm. we know a whole lot of them. We're going to combine them all in one lady. <laughs> As far as we know, ain't none of them doing what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, okay, you and Sister Stacy, I mean, Sister Stephanie, you and Sister Stephanie will wake up after the Stephen snuck through on the night and stole away all of your evilness, <laughs> your evil desires, <laughs> your cell phone too, and you wake up on the next day. Mm -hmm. Now what? What you gonna do? You got you here on what it what is Stephanie gonna be doing and what is Stacy gonna be doing that day? How different is it gonna be that week? How quickly is Stephanie gonna get off track and find herself dealing with the spirits that we learn about in the Shepherd of Hermes? Anger, perfidiousness, mm -hmm. doubt all of them. How quickly is she gonna put herself in that state? By the end of the day, by the end of the day, she gonna do something wrong and sh and break one of the laws in the covenant. And so you live a set apart life for years, so you can learn to live the covenant, like they say, live the Bible. You learn to live the Bible. You can't just read it. There's a whole lot of people who got a Bible in their house somewhere, and they already planning to dust it off and get to reading. Well, they better hope they're a speed reader and they both better hope they got the, comp the uh, comprehension skills of a doctorate student. And, you know, because the first mistake, the first violation is going to cost. And some violations carry the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Those violations that carry the death penalty are going to get them people killed very fast. So which one of the penalties is Stephanie going to do that's now going to get her killed? How fast is she going to do something that's going to get her killed? And that's why you live a set-apart life, because you now know from years of this right. what not to do. Mm -hmm. You don't do this, you don't do that. Stephanie don't know that, and she don't know to call you an ex either. I guess what I was thinking was that, and I don't know why I was thinking this, that your whole memory would be wiped out and all everything about your thoughts and everything that you know would be changed to. It's not saying that, huh? No. You're going to wake up. Like Daniel said, we're going to wake up. Some of us are going to wake up to remorse, and some of us are going to wake up to shame. But every one of us is going to wake up to who we really are with our conscience standing there in our face judging us. Our own conscience will be judging us. Right. And that's why some will get remorseful because they're going to be like, ooh, I need to do better. And some are going to get shameful. And like, ooh, it ain't my fault. Mm -hmm. And... But the ones, the latter will be those who are not prepared to go over. And right. they'll end up destroying each other. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like we're basically practicing for that time. And Feast Days is all about that. Feast Days teach you how 
uh, it teaches you primitive stuff, living in tents, um, um, properly preparing meat, um, um, even agricultural principles are all based on that, and that's what we're going to need to survive, along with the angels who will provide supernatural protections. Praise the Lord, Father, yeah, for his word. Mm -hmm. 20. In order for man to work with the next electron orbital level of the universal mind, our molecular density level will have to become less dense and grow more transparent in order to participate in multidimensional realities. Now notice that little name there. Notice that word there. Molecular. Mm -hmm. It has the word molec in it. What does molec mean? King. Mm. Molek means king. Right. Just thought I'd throw that fun fact out there mm -hmm. that the root word is king here. And we're about to change on a molecular level. And we ain't talking about big king. We're talking about itty bitty stuff that you can't even see with a normal microscope. Right. Man must be completely remade anew by going through the energy grids that control his present biological arrangement so that he can be respitalized into new grids of attunement. Specifically, man must go through the energy grid controlling cell division on his biological level of organization. A planetary biometric grid controlling the collective species evolution and his solar paradigm receiving galactic energies from the worlds of negative mass. So we have to go through this change. In other words, humanity cannot go on unless this happens to us. Simply because, like you were saying, if we don't, there's always going to be a pocket that go against it and reform, and we're just going to be going through the same over and over again. Fifth dimensionally true, but also third dimensionally, you're just not going to be able to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have Walmart trucks, but you're not going to have plows, and it sounds like you're not even going to have sunshine either to grow your food for you like you're used to. So therefore, I mean, it's just saying that, you know, I know it's talking about sales and all this other stuff. I'm not, not don't have a full grasp of understanding of, I don't think I probably ever will, but is this saying something about we won't even really need food? Or is this uh, saying no, something it's, like that? No, it's going to be provided for you. You got hidden manna that's going to come for those in the cities and those, you know, with the white stone. Those that need hidden manna will get hidden manna, basically it's food appearing from nowhere. And then others will be led to food and led to water. Um, because they'll have to provide for others and they'll be able to show the pathways to the water and there's pathways to the food and this, that, and the other. And, but, yeah, the, the, the plan for the food is that the angels will feed us. That's the one thing we ain't worried about is food because the angels are supposed to provide for us and protections, you know. And hopefully we won't act like uh, our foreparents or like we did uh, in the first era when we you know, complain and talk about it. <laughs> no. Um, well, normally it would be, if it was just a straight up earthquake, it would be, but you gotta remember the change in the people too. It's right. also the hour of the consciousness. Right. And so most of the people will have a desire to do good. Be grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you in your dream the other day, mm -hmm. when you was on the train, mm -hmm. Stacy had a dream, I'll tell you real quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it in a Disney way, just so we can move on. Okay. So Stacy was on the rapture train. <laughs> she was on the pole shift train. Okay. And when she started off on the pole shift train, she was in my cart, way in front of the train, mm -hmm. well, up in the cabin cars, and I was going to take a nap. Oh, hold up! You know that reminds me of that movie, The Polar Express. Polar Express. That's a big train. I don't remember that. But that's what it looked like? Mm hmm Okay. So Stacy, in the, in the dream, real short dream, she leaves the cabin car, goes through the... Passenger. Passenger car with, mm -hmm. all, with a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. Crowded. Crowded. 
And she goes through there and gets to the back car on a wagon car, some flatbed, flat, flatbed car. Mm -hmm. And she sits down amongst a whole lot of other people who are happily riding their way into eternity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. a rapture dream. And the last thing I remember, and I was thinking about this the other day, was how I was just sitting there, wrapped up in my blanket, just smiling, like, wow, we, we made it. Well, that's, that's the pole shit. That's yeah. the pole shit. As you sit there and ride everybody, everybody else just happily on this train going in too. You know, some will be inside the cabin cars, some will be with the mass multitude that no man can number. And some will be dangling on in the back, happy to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like she had left first class, walked through business class, and into the car. Hey, you better get on that train somewhere. Hey, I don't care. I'll strap I'll you to the front of it. They say they used to say at church, I'll be a door sweeper. <laughs> yeah. <I was> down there. <laughs> yeah. Just don't be a tank on a rope being drugged. <laughs> Curls them trussles. Yeah. <laughs> they hurt. Yeah, but one of the things that was fascinating about that is just one of the things that is so many children. It was more children, seemed like than adults, and uh, I was there helping other people. Yeah, you know? I, I forgot that part. And that's key too is that you were assisting the people with the luggage and assisting people with the, the stuff, especially in the passenger car. Right. And then you kind of took a break on a regular car or something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Pole shift. 22. When man goes through these energy grids, he will activate the new magnetic fields and displace his old planetary biorhythms. We're going to do that? We're going to replace them? Oh, and displace his old, okay. No, we're not going to do it. Our cells are going to do it for us. Hmm, okay. Yeah, the bodies are going to do it. First, the lateral displacement of the solar particles in relationship to our galactic disk, creating time lapse cosmodistics, will be corrected, allowing the historical timeline of motion to be harmonized with the spiritual grid of infinite patterns that we are to be aligned with. Yeah, the stars are aligning. And when you understand electromagnetics, it's real easy to understand once all these wandering stars shift to one side of the planet like they will do here on April the 8th. It can pull our electromagnetic field of our Earth and shift it in a way that's going to cause disturbances to our life. But this is a... The whole solar system is going through this change. Then ultraviolet light sensitivity will have a special reprogramming function with our DNA. It will establish a recombination of the elements of the life chemistry. Told you. It's going to change our DNA. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, sun is already doing that. And the um, UVC rays affects DNA. Now, when we talk about, I know I, you know, I studied DNA, dioxyribonucleic acid. Uh, what, what, just on a plain everyday, you know, example, Give me an example of changing of DNA that I I could um, well, we just, understand. Well, we talked about it back in seventeen. Sort of like what what I was speaking about. Sort of like you remember when back in you know we were going through the period of uh, COVID. I don't know if you can say that word anymore again. About how people would say the shot was changing people's DNA. Yeah. So I don't know exactly what that meant, but. Is this saying something like what will be happening to us as far as well, the changing? Yeah, and I'm gonna have to take off all kinds of hats because I don't have all of the information to talk on it. But yeah, that was RNA, R oh, okay. DNA. In other words, it changed you personally. Mm -hmm. It didn't change your kids. But what's gonna happen now is on a much broader, bigger scale. Every cell in your body is going to change, whereas that one is just making you immune to this or immune to that. Okay. Every cell is going to change, and every human. So it ain't a matter who's going to decide to get in the line and who ain't. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you ain't going to decide to go next week. You all go and get your shot today, and it's going to change your DNA. Okay. For forever, all you know, humans will forever be different. All right. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five. 
Contrary to what present day genetics feel, the ultraviolet radiation will be controlled and will not destroy the sensitive genetic code. So in other words, we're getting cancer from the sun now. And that's going to change too. It'll no longer be uncontrolled, but it'll be moderated so we don't end up perishing from it. Right. It has already been postulated that ultraviolet radiation, when applied to the DNA at specific intensities, causes thymine to dimerize. 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 I don't know which one is that. You never heard that word before. It means for the thymine to become basically bonded to itself. Giving you cancer. Changing yeah. your cells. When it's dimerized, that means that there'll be two thymines. Huh. Cancer. Anytime you change a cell or anything in your body, that's a cancer. Your white cell, your white blood cells immediately start atta attacking them. And if they can't fend them off, those cells will start duplicating themselves. And then you're going to get a tumor. This causes the hydrogen double bonds to break and create a cyclobutane ring between the dimers. Yeah, and you hear about all these strange diseases mm -hmm. that people are supposed to get. Right. Yeah. In consequence, a bulge arises which does not allow the DNA to bind or transcribe. It causes the DNA to become unrecognized to the preliminaries of its basic activity. Yeah. And so the body can fix some of these errors, but when they become too numerous, then the cell becomes a cancer cell. And if there's too many cancer cells, then the body is overwhelmed. Yeah, and that's a, one of the main reasons why we have a Savage Day is to allow our bodies to fight some of this off. And to heal. Right? To heal, and that probably is the reason why you know those who don't keep the Savage Day will have um, the boils on them. Or, you know, Those boils being small tumors. Small tumors are these cells that are. So is these small tumors this this bulge? That's what I was thinking. That's when I saw that word. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all help us out in the comment section. All right. Twenty nine. However, it has also been found that a photoreactive enzyme plus one phototon. A visible light breaks this bulge and allows for the proper coating to take place. So we really need to study this because we've talked about it in the classes whether you're supposed to embrace the sun or hide from it. Well if you understand what he's saying here he's telling you. He's telling us how these changes are going to take place. It seems to be saying right here in 29 um, that the sun helps it. Yeah well it's in uh, a photoreactive enzyme so you have the photoreactive enzyme. And there are a lot of people who are gonna holler up and say that that is what we call melanin. Mm -hmm. You had a photoreactive enzyme or the lack of melanin. Somebody gonna point the melanin. I don't know if I'm saying it. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't yeah, expert on this yet. Mm -hmm. But you know, either it's the too much melanin or not enough. It says when you had, that's the photoreactive enzyme plus one photon of visible light. So that's the solar flare. The universe, the, the atmosphere is not going to help us from this. Um, oh, it's going to focus it in. I don't know if it's good or bad. But the, the, this is talking about the sun um, and a photon. We know of a solar flare that's going to change humanity. It's going to break this bulge and allow the proper coating to take place. So the sun is going to heal us. That's Malachi chapter 4. The sun is a purifier. Because it's like... Sun of righteousness. Inside of the cells, there are machines that read the DNA, and when this bulge appears, because of the ultraviolet radiation, it clogs up that machine, so now it can't read the DNA anymore. Mm -hmm. So if the bulge is broken, then now it can read the DNA again. See, that's why I bought Christine. <laughs> Let's go on. I actually think that it's actually talking about uh, more so of the melanin, because brown folks love to be in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how the other guys don't. Yeah, we soak it up. <laughs> 30. 
This recombination model is necessary in the development of a replication model, which is the key to the arrangement of genes on chromosomes for the control of biological aging and degenerate changes during our species evolution. So you start getting old. Mm -hmm. See, that's why it's important to take care of your body now. Because when you go through the pole shift, you're going to have the same body to deal with. Yeah, black don't crack. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but it's saying that whatever state that your body's in when you go through this shift that could be what you're stuck with yeah mm. so yeah. you're saying like if you're uh feeble you could be stuck with a feeble body well yeah well you go get stuck with the feeble body but we got to remember the other things that it talk about how your blood will start to heal you too okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. but is it going to Put your bone back? Is it going to put that leg you got missing from the war? Or is it going back? Yeah. Well, let's talk about 31 because I think that's going to talk about it. It says, and before the larger electromagnetic change happens, man will also understand how new growth effects will be the result of electromedicine, which uses electromagnetism. Man, by using the light surgery of electromagnetic penetration into bone marrow will be able to create new bone growth. Yeah, so we bone, we grow our bone. But notice here how it says that man will also understand. So here's the scientists. The scientists will be the ones leading the way because they're gonna to want to be the first to understand this electromedicine and uh, molecular cell structure changes and all it takes is for them to have a spirit of truth and right. they're going to bring it out and say, hey, this is, this is what's going on. This is, explains why granddaddy is 900 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's still climbing trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now his osteoporosis became better. <laughs> yeah. Bones came back to life. <laughs> oh, that's cool. The stimulation of cartridge regeneration by current magnetic injection, the restoration of partial limb regeneration by small direct currents, the stimulation of bone growth by electrical fields, the inhabitation of growth of implanted tumors in mammals by electrical currents are all a part of electromedicine, which is the science Harnessing electrophysiological energies using the right electromagnetic field. So all of these different things, is it saying will be happening or is happening? It is. It is. Looks like it's saying that we're already dabbling into electromedicine. Well, um, and I guess, yeah, you can do a quick search for that. I know you can find something on electromedicine, but it sounds that we want to actually learn how to use it right now. Right. You know, somebody's experimenting with it. You use the word dabbling with it, but those people probably be the first ones to come on something. All it's going to take is for the spirit of truth to, you know, come into their work. And they're going to have a lot of revelations about, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. And subatomic particles is kind of new. You know, string theory is kind of new. And, you know, when they start to put married when they start to marry spring or uh, string theory and spirituality when they put those two things together humanity is gonna change big huge fast skyrocket yeah because not only are you changed already it ain't like you got to go down and you know to the doctor's office the doctor is just going to put out information and say hey this is what you are experiencing already and you're gonna say oh okay mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense and then you just need the scripture to understand how not to mess all that up because that's, that's going to be the problem. It ain't the change. It's the... Obedience. Yeah, not knowing what to do the next day. Not the getting day changed after. back. Yeah, not getting changed back. Or worse, you end up worse. Moreover, when embryonic growth is placed in an artificial environment, which is subject to prolonged current magnetic injection, the former embryonic magnetic lines of force in the body can be changed. Yeah, so it's the, it's the pole shift that's going to change us. 
Through this process, the whole body can biomagnetically be recorded to adapt to a new biological environment without ever having to experience pain according to the human psychological network. In other words, we're not going to know what it is. Hmm. Like deep in the night. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, your fingernails will start growing and your hair will start growing and all that kind of stuff. And you, you won't, you'll barely notice. Humans will just start looking better and the food is going to play a big part in it because we'll get back to a natural food. Right. Not No longer poisoning ourselves. The only reason why we are privy to this information is because the world needs to know. Otherwise, they're going to get caught off guard. But as far as that, nobody really needs to know other than the covenant, the book, you know, what, what we need to do. Because um, everybody is not really, you know, everybody's not going to hear this teaching. Everybody's not going to, you know, understand all of this. Everybody's not going to purchase uh, the keys of Enoch. Nor do so, they need them. They don't need this, this yeah. level of understanding. Everybody's so, not an engineer. What everybody does need to know is that they need to, you know, be under the covenant is what you're saying. Because yeah. these things are going to take place, but you need to know, like you said, what are you going to do tomorrow? Well, it, well, the new covenant is part of it, too. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the old covenant. The, the, it never goes away. It will be impressed on your heart. And so now you have these rules that's impressed on your heart. But which one are you going to know is a covenant, a covenant rule? Or which one are you going to think is your own personal thoughts? Just like now. Mm -hmm. so you'll be struggling between what is your conscience telling you and what is just you talking to yourself or thinking to yourself. And... So you have the scripture then to back it up to say, oh, yeah, I remember that verse. Right. Yeah, I remember that, you know, in the situations, because that's why the Third Testament says that the scripture would be like a gift, like, like a treasure map, because you know where all the dangers are and all the golden rings are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 35. This process is used as fifth circulatory system which opens the pain coding mechanism and properly realigns the blood, lymphatic, and nervous circulatory systems to function in different biological environments. In other words, the child which is being carried in spatial, spatial. spatial environments can be reprogrammed while in the embryonic, embryonic state to be prepared for special planetary environments. I hope this ain't the only way. <laughs> You're saying that the children are going to be born special. And it may be mm. that the, that this change, mm -hmm. you, you know, that because our bodies are one way. And if you think about it back in the days of the flood, when the change took place, it was quick. People went from 900 years down to, you know, 130. 100, yeah, real quick. But those people were still of that age. You remember Jacob was a real old man when he was introduced to Pharaoh. He said, my dad is an old man. And he meant that literally, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but, the Joseph didn't live that long. He was still a long time, but, you know, mm -hmm. by the time you get to Moses, you was down to 120 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it kept going down and down and down thing about it, the way I understand it, Daniel lived a long time. Even when you read the book of Daniel, it's like, wait a minute, you was in the book of Daniel? How many kings? Was, yeah, yeah, how many kings you talked to? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you was there with granddaddy and you here now and the whole country been taken over. You was there when they, when this became a nation and you here when it, it was destroyed as a nation. And you were here when the next nation. And you were here when the next nation ruling the next king. So Daniel, what's going on with you and your, and, you know, your, your unfavorable bread and not putting your oil on you, sounding like you're doing the same 40 day fast as the Messiah. What's up with that? Mm. Mm. What happened? What would happen to the Messiah if you didn't put him on the cross? Well, he'd still be walking around. Mm -hmm. It, it, my point is, yeah. is that maybe we have already had this available. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of getting ourselves prepared in a in a way we can embrace this as the first fruits. But humanity as a whole gonna get it one day. Mm -hmm. 
Because the flare, we're getting flashes. Mm -hmm. But the whole world will get a flare. Right. It's different. Different between a firecracker and a bomb. This is done in the event that a transfer of the species to a new environment is necessary for the survival of the race. Here, the guiding intelligence is well aware that the child can make genetic changes. You, you, you look at the path, the trajectory that humanity is on now. How long do you think we'll be able to survive this? Yeah, not very long. War, yeah. the way they're attacking food, the way yeah. they, you know, all of this stuff going on, humanity yeah. can't survive so this. So much, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through this change. Yeah. In addition, when we can travel beyond the upper limits of this present electromagnetic spectrum, we will understand how our electromagnetic density controls the spin charge of the amino acid patterns of our present life evolution. You need to wake the scientists up. They study this stuff all the time. They just don't have the spiritual element in it. Tra scientists are trained to block out any spiritual they, from day one. If you can't prove it, it ain't real. Okay, what about God? Just like I said. Prove it scientifically with methods and numbers, else they don't even want to talk about it. Well, that's gonna they're going to go through this change too. Mm -hmm. And many of them who already know about the, uh, these spins and the uh, these uh, amino acid spins will be, like I said, the first ones to embrace it. And then it's a matter of studying and educating us as fast as we can because we're going to be needing that information. And then they're going to come in and say, hey, not only has this happened in you, but this is how you take advantage of it through this electro medicine. All right. And this is why our electromagnetic stage of evolution will itself be changed to allow for new patterns of ongoing evolution. Merkaba mechanisms give the cue for the timing of biological change by the Earth's magnetic cycles. These changes will take place in a matter of hours and remove whole species that have evolved in a geological time frame. Yeah, it says, um, I forgot what book I was listening to in the Old Testament. It might have been Chronicles or one of the books I was listening to say it changes instantly. All of this is going to change overnight. We're going to go from the way we are as humans to different. Mm -hmm. And what we are understanding to be that event that brings about that change is um, the pole shift. The f solar flare. The flare is the rays of the sun. We, we can get even more specific. We know that this flare is going to happen during the pole shift. But it's the flare, these rays from the sun that's going to do this. That's going to change our DNA. And these Merkabas, notice right here, it said the Merkabas are the cue. So when you see these people seeing all of these Merkabas in the sky, they don't know what they are. They just call them light being mm -hmm. the spaceships. They call them aliens. Mm -hmm. These are a sign of the times that we're in. That's why you're seeing so many of them. It's because they're here to be the cue for the timing of biological change by Earth's magnetic cycles. Right. right. And from a engineering point of view, yeah, that these fields are allowing these lights to be seen by humans. Mm. Mm. Slowing down light enough to where we can see it or slowing or speed up time, slowing down time enough so we can see it. We don't understand slowing down light, but we can understand time. And so time is changing in a way that you could actually see a spiritual entity and you can only really see it in the form of light. Hmm. No, it just reminds me of that light that, you know, we saw, I can't remember exactly when, out front. Uh, it was just, it was just really weird. Just you like, saw it. Yeah. Because I had my back to it. I was looking at you. Yeah. And you went through a pole shift immediately after that day. So we need to think about what happened. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. something big happened after that. I don't know that. if I was a post shift, but I know things started getting weird around here. Yeah. And, you know, you could have, I, I questioned it that day. What did you actually see? Because we didn't see anything. Right. You were the only one that saw it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> post <Pole> shift. <laughs> The evidence for this can be revealed in the correlation between field reversals and discontinuities of microfauna 
and deep sea sediment cores. Yeah, I wonder if it had anything to do with my compass turning backwards. Mm -hmm. I ain't checked it in a while. I better go check my compass now and see if it's still pointing in the right direction. But I was here at the Hillbilly Homestead a couple of seasons in the, mm -hmm. you know, it was both in the fall season. The compass is reversed. Right. And we was looking at a compass that was trying to tell us that the sun was rising in the west. And it's like, do I need to throw this compass away? <laughs> it was every compass. Remember, it was right. the cell phone. Was the, cell, the cell phones did the same thing, so it was digital too. But you can't, you can't, you can, you can trick my compass on the phone. I mean, on the, on the, um, my real 3D compass. But everything was affected. GPS. A couple, a couple of people reported in that there was. Yeah, like around that too. and yeah, it, it wasn't a global thing, but here in this part of the world, the Southeast United States, yeah, we experienced. Yeah, reported from Tennessee. Ancient mm -hmm. past reported from Tennessee. And Georgia, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. people in Ohio, they didn't notice. Right. Mm -hmm. As much change as we did, but they did see something. Mm -hmm. A few degrees off, where we were straight up 180 degrees off. Anyway, let's go. On. Forty-one. The Beroskova mammoths in Siberia established the existence of heat sinks, which must have occurred in order to perfectly preserve their molecular structure. These heat sinks are necessary to account for a perfect state of preservation and could only have occurred as a result of very rapid changes, whereby the mammoths were quickly buried under tons of ice and tundra. Like, a, like the scripture was saying, um, it happens quickly. Mm -hmm. so Twinkling up, huh? Like they were flash frozen. Flash frozen, mm, right. right. This right. was a pole shift. That's what he's trying to tell us here, is that this is what happened to those people. And I was listening to a video the other day from a channel called After School mm -hmm. that was saying the exact same thing, how it happened instantly, how you had happy m mammoths and cyber-toothed tigers walking around on Wednesday, and on Friday, they was all gone. Sort of like that cartoon movie where the elephant and the... Ice Age. Ice Age, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was a pole shift, a solar flare, which must have occurred in order to perfectly preserve their molecular structure. Mm. So how are you going to have a heat sink to do that? <laughs> Turn them into the charcoal. Man, man. Yeah, freeze. Mm. Oh, maybe the heat was taken away. Yeah, okay, I get it now. The heat sink was somewhere away, somewhere away from them. Yeah, and it sucked all the heat out of them. Instantly. Where did they go? Into the atmosphere? They don't ain't there no more. Or what happened? Anyway, this process of rapid extinction extends even to the smallest one-cell marine animal life, which became extinct simultaneously throughout the world. Yeah, so they find fossils and everything just frozen in time. Right. Um little microorganisms, I forgot what they call them in the water, but they call them little things. Could this be what Plankton happened with the animals? dinosaurs? That's what he's animals? talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what he tried to tell us is that it wasn't a long period of time, it just fell off. Right. It, just like in the, in the movies where the dinosaur is sitting there eating his grass, and he looks up at a flare coming, and that's it. Ball game. It's mm -hmm. like being hit with a nuke all around the world, everything. And that's why the angels are supposed to come and escort you to a safe place. Where is that safe place? Is it under your tin roof? Or do you need to get under your house? Or do you need to get under your ground? Or what? You don't know. They do. But you know, we read the book of the covenant. Exodus chapter 23 says obeying the covenant will give us that necessary help that we hear about in Malachi chapter 4. Elijah's spirit comes to guide us. Right. Or even, you know, we read about in the hidden books how they turn the children into like stones and you know, to hide them yeah. yeah to hide them and thus man must face the fact that magnetic field reversal contributing to the rise and fall of species and civilization can occur very rapidly as a result of triggering events set in motion by cosmetic oscillation in combination with the Earth's magnetic field. Twinkling of an eye. They keep telling us it's going to go fast. For all of those who sit back waiting, saying they got time, you got time, but when it's time, it's time. And, you know, the virgins, when this happens, are going to go have, they're going to have to go back and find that oil. 
And of oil is the covenant, the scripture, the preparation. Um, cleanses away our sins and we got this to deal with. You know, the scripture says in a twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed. Mm -hmm. So this is the change it's talking about opposed to, you know, the change, you know, the church is telling us about there. I think when the church, from my understanding, if I can remember the twinkling of an eye, I was saying that we would go from being here to, you know, being up there with Jesus and, but it's nothing, it's not talking anything about that. No, actually, you just read it there. He says, the process of rapid extinction extends even to the smallest celled marine mammals. And then the other one says, yeah, like in 43, it says, the rise and fall of species civilizations occur very rapidly. Mm -hmm. So, what we're being told down by the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is that this solar flare is going to take us away. But he's not telling us what level of taking away he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He's A lot of humanity will become extinct. This is a um, extinction level event, which means over 75% of all life on the planet will go away. And so, yeah, that's what they're saying. And by putting us in this position where we're breaking the commandments, when we have this solar flare, we're going to become extinct. So in other words, we're going to be we're going to be supernaturally removed from the planet. But it's not because we are um, loved by the Lord. It's because we have been um, we have forsaken him. We have we have basically forsaken him and his rules and put him down in pursuit of what the church has to offer. Come in. It's going to me. It's you. Come on in. So in other words, they're only telling us half the truth. They're not telling us why we're going, not telling us where we're going, they're just telling us that we're going away. And especially aren't telling us how we can stop from going. Yeah, they're <laughs> and telling us that we really don't want to go. We don't want to go. 44. Um, However, Enoch explained to me that there are still living species that survive, even in the polar areas where the geomagnetic change is not a question of advancing and retreating ice, but the relocation of the entirety of the Earth's mantle along a new magnetic meridian. In other words, people that live in the poles, the North Pole will be all right. And it's because the planet itself is gonna roll around where those who are on the North Pole right now are gonna find themselves closer to zone eight, growing apple trees and stuff. And so it's, They'll, they'll have some people in there that survived, but what he's really trying to say is how the majority of the people are not. Yeah. Right. They're not going to be here. Yep. And yeah. Re and the relocation of the mantle, that's the whole polar ice caps being shifted closer to what he believes is Siberia right now. Mm. So where will we be? We will be closer to the equator. We're going to get hot down here jungle kind of area mm -hmm. you need to start collecting your banana seeds now <laughs> 45 in the process of the energy buildup leading to these events Enoch said all large-scale changes in the magnetic fields arise out of the mechanical motions of a conducting magnetohydrodynamic activity so this is a buildup and you hear the pole shift guys talk about how this has happened throughout history and they also tell you how we're overdue but it, it's the stars that's lining up you know and he, they're lining up in 2024 and 2025 2023 too this is already starting right but there is a day when we're going to get this flash we're getting flares now Every so often we get flares, but we're going to get a flash. The Earth's core, composed mostly of molten iron, conducts electric currents which amplifies accompanying magnetic fields when energy wave bombardment pours in through the polar areas of the Earth. So the planet is going to become electrified. Yeah, when I was thinking, when it says this word magneto, dynamic it once again reminds me of x-men magneto mm -hmm. who 
was able to pull anything that dealt with iron, you know, a to him. And so this goes on to talk about mostly the molten iron. So what's the significance of that? Well, what you said is true or related. Then, <laughs> you know, the core of the earth will change. What is that going to do to us when the amount of electric charge in the core changes? That's every electronic device on the planet, ain't it? Yeah. Everyone that's plugged in, at least, will get fried. That's so it just makes me think uh, there was no way for any species, dinosaurs or whatever, to be able to have survived this. Not above the ground, no. Some of them did. You still have dinosaurs around today. Right, that evolved from crocodiles. We, we call them alligators yeah. and mm -hmm. chickens. Chicken? Oh, okay. <laughs> something, a raptor. Yeah, that yeah. might, you uh, know, we could. Alligators and stuff were also alive during the dinosaur yeah. age. And what if the Komodo dragon? Mm -hmm. That's a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. But those kind of notice they're smaller, though. Mm -hmm. The bigger ones had to go away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excessive cosmic wave bombardment transforms the iron core into a liquid plastic like field which disrupts the state of energy, equilibrium within the core of the earth. Shift. You read in the Third Testament, the Great Book of True Life, how they're going to be continents that's going to disappear. Whole continents are going underwater. Well, we learn here that it's because your core has just been liquefied. You're turning into like Play-Doh. Yeah, and so now you're just floating around on the surface up here on the, on the crust. The crust of the earth is floating around. And that's similar to what happened during the days of uh, Eber, when the earth was split, when the earth was divided. Mm. That, you know, you can find all kinds, every, every book in the Bible, I believe, has a pole shift in it. You just have to look for it. But Eber, when it said that the earth was divided, that's a similar thing, the, the core liquefied and your continents started to separate. Mm -hmm. These unique energy transformations are the cause of some of the larger magnetic reversals throughout the galaxy. Yeah, so they're happening. Like we heard a few minutes ago, Saturn is changing. Oh, and I, I saw something on a video on YouTube that said Saturn is changing in a not good way. I didn't actually click on it. Mm -hmm. We'll look it up now. Mm -hmm. But it said that Saturn was going through changes and the thumbnail said and in a not a good way. So we better look into that because we just read about it. How other planets and other star systems are being changed as well. Yeah, they're all magnetic. And if you look at how you line up magnets in an array, once you pluck one, every one of them in the array jiggles. All right. 49. These massive cosmic wave bombardments are caused by changes in the vibration rate of star grids in relationship to fundamental periods of activities within the Milky Way. See, this, like I said, this information is being oppressed. People literally don't want us to know about this. They want us to think that it's just going to be a random act that they somehow are prepared for with their FEMA trucks and their extra bullets and all of that when this is going on in time. This is what the wise men were looking at when they knew the Messiah was coming. This is what Abraham was looking at when he was looking at the signs of the times. These stars mean something. So there's no way you can, you know, other than knowing what you know, all of this preparation that people and stuff are doing is kind of um, frivolous. Yeah, frivolous. Well, the purpose in it is for the righteous seed. He has allowed these people who are otherwise under a state of delusion to store up stuff within their house with the plan being that many of these people who have this stored stuff won't survive and then those who do survive mm -hmm. will emerge and like you said you want to find houses that are already built wells that are already dug uh, food pantries that are already full because mm -hmm. somebody else who was only speaking third dimension and he prepared that stuff for you and then the angels are going to lead you to it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read this comment on this video. It was about preparation. This guy, he was saying he's an older guy, and so he knows that he won't be around to use it, but he's been stocking and preparing for years for those who come behind him to use. So this is something like, I know that's not necessarily what he was talking about, but 
It really is what's it, going it, to be It happening. is what's talking about because he started, he, he didn't have that mindset when he got started. Right. He was thinking he was going to eat that. But now yeah. he didn't got old. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, well, might as well give it to somebody else. But that's the same thing. It was wasted. Yeah. And somebody else is going to use it. Mm -hmm. Somebody well, that never stored a can of beans in their life is going to find his hoard. Yeah. So, you know, if you're one of those people who's doing that, you know, suck up some chocolate chips and stuff like that. <laughs> we like stuff like that, too. Stacey 51. says, stock up. So she put it in here. I'm trying to think what I want. <laughs> <laughs> 50. Furthermore, the transformation of the Earth's core into a liquid, plastic-like field causes the core dynamo to act like an inner lubricant. This allows the shell of the planet to slide when the proper torque forces on the shell of the Earth are thrown into geomagnetic reversal. So it's going to act as a lubricant to allow us to shift around more easily. Floating around. Yeah, like I said, the Third Testament said whole continents are going to say two-thirds of the continents that we know about today are going to disappear and other continents that we've never heard of are going to come up out of the water. That's a whole nother book that's not related to this one that was written in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we see evidence in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in, in science too, where you see the uh, planets were once combined and they shifted apart. Mm -hmm. The only problem is man tells us that this happens over thousands and thousands and millions and millions of years. When it don't, it happens in a minute. That it instantly, our core is going to heat up to the point to where it's going to become liquefied down here even more so than it is now and the crust on the earth is gonna it's gonna be like we're floating on water so like I, we're a bunch of um like we're floating on water on those pool beds inflatable beds yeah and whereas now we we're stuck together with some scotch tape well that scotch tape gonna get broken apart and it's gonna get broken apart at the fault zones and that's probably why we have an extra cross america right centered on America's main fault zone. Mm. That's going to shake us apart. The Mississippi River is going to expand to the point where you can't cross it anymore. Mm. I mean, it's going to become like an ocean. So I wonder if this have anything to do with the planet changes they're constantly talking about. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Where, you know, some say they're trying to hide the change. Some say they're not. I don't know. Well, they're trying to hide the change. It is those who are in power now who want to stay in power until the day, to the last day, whether it's their last day on earth or the earth's last day under them. They want to keep going. They don't want to miss a dollar. And the way to keep you doing that is to keep you in a state that they've had you since the 70s or, you know, ignorant to all things that's going on, partying like it's 1999. Well, one thing I've noticed throughout this whole reading that nothing's talking about the things that we're going to have. You know, nothing's talking about our material goods and all this other stuff. Because that stuff's not going to be important. No, everything on the earth is going to shake down. Every building is going to mm -hmm. shake. Every foundation is going to break. And so your basic necessities are just going to be food and clothing. Or food and water. You ain't worried so much about your clothing. And in case you get out of control, they've got enough bullets stocked up and they got tents and stuff like that. That's the plan is to put you in tents and feed you MREs behind their fence so they can stay in control even after everything yeah after. their plan is to stay in control and, and, uh, and a lot of reason why this book right here is being suppressed by those who are selling it those that they are selling it to and a whole group is suppressing this book because they are the elite and they planning on taking advantage of these they are using this information to figure out where they're on the ground tunnels are going to be and all of that Thinking that they can supplant our father and get away from him and do it themselves. And even though this word was inspired, I wouldn't call it Bible, but it's inspired writing definitely. These people think they can now take this unique information that they have and use it so that on the other end of this thing, they can emerge as the rulers of the planet. And I, have, I don't have to say it, but I'm going to say it is I have the same plan. That is our plan. Everybody in my shoes has the same plan. We have a book of knowledge. We call it the Bible. 
and we have that book of knowledge and we are reading it and preparing ourselves mentally, physically, and whatever else. So that when it all goes down, we're going to emerge on the other side with the know-how and the skills to take over the planet. That's our father's plan is that Israel is going to take over the planet. But the people behind this book, the people who are marketing this book, I should say, are trying to withhold this information so they can come out on the other side right. and rule the planet. Because right. if everybody's special, then nobody is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so they, yeah, oh, and so they, they special. We call them the elite now, but they want to keep their special. Our planet is no different than any other form of life that must renew itself. It is like an energy molecule going through renewal and being restored to a new existence. Yeah, and you know, when you start thinking from chemistry, how our planet is kind of like an electron or a proton. I ain't did so yet, but I would bet that if you look at the model of our solar system and compare it to the model of an atom, you're going to find that they're the same. Same as our blood, it's the same thing, same process, same thing, really. And me. It's just different scales. 52. We must understand that the geomagnetic reversals and the changing of the electromagnetic density are necessary parts of the recycling of human biochemical processes as humanity passes into a new body of life. In all of these fundamental changes, however, we must understand that there is no fixed time scale in these changes from the standpoint of a singular relativity. The time factor is determined by a sliding criteria of events on a galactic and planetary scale matched with the spiritual activity of a sun universe directing the blueprint of casual fertility. In other words, when we line up with Kimmel, when this planet lines up with Kimmel, along with all of these other wandering stars, when they lined up, we're going to get zapped. That's what he's saying. You're going to get a flash. Sum it up. Sum it up. It's, <laughs> it's our, our uh, sun universe. That's Kimmel. That's where our black hole is at. That's the center of our universe. And when these stars line up in a way that they're going to all uh, direct this light energy towards us, we're going to get fried in a, in a good way. But we're going to get zapped. All negativity is going to get fried off the planet, even down to your cells. If you got a bad cell running around in there, he about to get beat up by solar radiation. Just like the blood being fried out of a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Any bad blood you got, about to boil over. It's going to be fast. 53. Between the periodical time scales of cosmic renewal, man emerges on the scene as an intelligence which survives by being a part of the Father's plan of ongoing soul creation. Intelligence. In other words, we're going to get smart. Because of what they're saying, their father's plan of ongoing soul creation. So we about to just know stuff. Wise people. You're going to be old, wise people. Whereas now we're young and dumb, we're going to be the old and wise. Based on this poetry. Is man thus to await the total destruction of the planet? God forbid. What the father has ordained, he beckons into renewed creation through the return of the masters who will set their feet upon the planet in order to assist man in the work of recreation. So he plans to send back the 144,000. The masters, the, the ones who understand these, these light beings, these uh, myriad of angels will come through to help. That's his plan. He's saying, are we just to sit back and wait to die? No, his plan is is that right before that rock crushes us, he's going to snatch us away from under it. The paradox of momentary planetary death it will stand as a leveling force of the false powers of planetary control, while the consciousness awakening of human and interdimensional intelligence will share the new day that will come upon them so quickly that death does not recognize that it has passed into life. 
The rite of passage will lead into the light, and the light shall devour the fire of death as three-dimensional consciousness puts on the image of light. So we don't fear death anymore. Hmm. It says death is gone away. Hmm. People stop dying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we read in, you know, Peter and some of the other books that the planet is actually burned away in the next, the next time this happens, the planet is destroyed. And that's somewhere around a thousand years from now, which right. means there's some humans here who are going to be around to see that. The Messiah told them when you read it, when you read in the mm -hmm. Gospels, he told them that some of you are standing here mm -hmm. that's never going to die. You're going to see the end of the world. Well, mm -hmm. those people would be still around. Where are they? It says that death does not recognize that it has passed into life. Yeah. And so, you know, the messages that we're hearing a lot, you know, scaring us and, you know, we're going to die. It's not that. It's actually going to go away. Like we said, we're not going to fear death. But notice this part right here where it says the paradox of momentary planetary death will stand as a leveling force of the false powers of planetary control. In other words, the playing fields are going to be made equal. Hmm. Egypt is going to fall. That's the fall of Babylon that he's talking about there. These forces are going to be shaken down. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily, it's not talking about uh, Babylon the place. It's talking about Babylon, the the, the whole thing. Yeah, the, what the thing. these yeah. powers that yeah. control us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they're affecting us on a consciousness level, even to the point where they're shaming us into worshiping false gods. They'll go as far as to say, you don't love the Lord if you don't mm -hmm. do the pagan holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that those forces will be destroyed during this leveling process. Or get us ready for this new day. That what they say that will come up to so quickly that death does not recognize that it has passed away. So people will be scared of death and their their bodies will actually be getting stronger under. Yeah, they will re won't realize that it's already happened. Yeah, until they find themselves like, how old are you? Like, wait a minute, how old am I? <laughs> 56 then it shall be written that the faithful who were like the three servants of Daniel put on the image of light while in the fiery furnace and were coded into the light and into salvation so that's why you live a set apart life those three individuals with Daniel back there was living a set apart life. You remember how they didn't want to eat the food? Mm -hmm. They didn't want to, you know, do all of the things that the other so-called um, captives were partaking in. Right. These three guys stood up and said, hey, we're going to be different. And even to the point where they stood up to the king and said, hey, you can think what you want. You can even do what you want. But right. we're never going to break the laws of the Lord, mm -hmm. even to the point where they were standing in the fiery furnace. Right. And that's what's going to happen now. So it's happening now. These children of the Most High are out in these wilderness protected from this. If they can stop turning them on the news, they would never know any of these events were going on. They would live happy, isolated lives protected in the wilderness just like they was back there with Moses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh. like back then the people with Moses didn't know that there was a big war going around yeah. everywhere else. Yeah, they didn't know that. It, it tells you right in there. They were leading them away from us so they wouldn't even see it. Yeah, well, because it would have scared them. Yeah, and they'd have ran back to Egypt. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're complaining about food and water while World War Zero was going on. So you're worried about their bellies. Yeah. <laughs> the whole world was in a world, yeah, in a world war. But, you know, that's not a good thing, you know. The whole world is in a war now, and aren't you happy? The only thing you're worried about is what we're finna eat for lunch right now. Mm -hmm. And closing out this video. So we can go ahead and do that real easy. <laughs> By inviting you guys to the comment section um, and our channel, um, coachingthefight.shop. You can see the celestial clock calendar that we're working on to help line some of this stuff up for you. If you want to mm -hmm. try to understand these star alignments and what's going on and why. You can get some free stuff, free printouts over at coachingthefight.shop. Otherwise, we'll see you in the comment section. Shalom. Shalom.